Okay, uh, welcome geometry students to uh, lesson five. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on the law of signs, including the ambiguous case. Okay, and so uh, let me just give you a little bit of context, a little bit of perspective. What we're trying to do here is very similar to what we were doing before. We are trying to find uh, the lengths of sides and the measures of angles in triangles. Uh, but what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to extend um, the trigonometry ideas, the Sokotoa idea, beyond uh, a right triangle. And so what we're looking to do uh, is to find the measures of angles and the lengths of sides in non-right angle triangles. And so what we cannot do is use Sokotoa um, because it only applies for right triangles. And so we're going to introduce the first of two laws uh, that can be used in non right triangles okay and that uh, first law is the law of signs so first I'm just going to explain um, uh, how the rule works and how it's set up and then um, uh, if uh, those of you who are interested in understanding where the rule came from how it was derived uh, there is another video posted on Google Drive on the derivation of the laws you can watch that to see where um, uh, the law originated or how it's developed and so the focus today is just going to be on how to use it. Okay, <clears throat> and so it is a theorem. Fortunately, no need to memorize. Um, uh, what they've got here is if we have a triangle, uh, you'll notice that we've got angle C and opposite it is the lowercase letter C, which represents the side opposite the given angle. And basically what happens with the law of signs is uh, you take uh, a pair of uh, sides and corresponding uh, a side and an angle, and then a second angle and a second side, and we set up a ratio, uh, sorry, a, a proportion, an equation of two uh, ratios. And so uh, I might use angle A and side A and equate it to angle, uh, uh, the, the side C uh, and uh, sine of angle C, uh, or I could use A and B or B and C or any combination thereof. And so they're showing all three, but we only in a problem ever set up two. The other important thing to, to uh, notice in the law of signs is that we can take the proportion and set it up uh, in a different way. We can, for instance, say A over sine of A, uh, and that would equal, for instance, B over sine of B or uh, uh, C over sine of C. But the point being, you can put the length of the side on top and sine of the angle in the denominator or vice versa as long as they correspond. So. Uh, if the length of the side goes on top in one ratio, it must go on top in the other ratio. Okay, and so when do we do, uh, when do we use the law of sines to find uh, lengths of sides or measures of angles? The answer is in two instances. First, we must make sure the triangle is a non-right angle triangle, uh, and then, because uh, if it's a right angle, of course, we could just use Sokotoa. So a non-right angle triangle, and then when we have ASA or AAS. In other words, two angles and a side. Of course, if we have two angles and a side, we know because of um, the fact that angles of a triangle add to 180. Once I give you two angles, you automatically know the third angle as well. Okay, and so let me show you in the next two examples exactly how this works, and then we'll move on to the more complicated explanation of the ambiguous case. Okay, so in this particular case, we have triangle ABC. Uh, so uh, uh, angle C is 21, angle B is 97, and so what you can see is we have no 90 degree angle in here. If we calculate angle A, it's obviously not going to calculate uh, as 90 degrees because we already have an obtuse angle in the triangle. And so this is an example of uh, a law of sines because we have two angles and a given side. So we have got um, uh, AAS in this particular case, and so we're going to use the law of sines. So what we do is we're going to take one of our given angles and the side opposite. We're going to take our second given angle and the side opposite. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, 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 write a proportion. Uh, and so in this particular case, since I'm solving for the length of a side, it's helpful uh, to put the length of the sides in the numerator. So I'm going to put x over sine of 21 degrees. And then on uh, the right-hand side of my equation, I will put the length of the side, which in this case is 16, over sine of 97 degrees. Uh, that's the setup, and all that remains to be done 
is to isolate x, and I'm going to isolate x um, by multiplying both sides of the equation by the number sine of 21 degrees. Remember, this represents a number. And so I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation, and I'm going to get x is equal to 16 multiplied by sine of 21 degrees divided by sine of 97 degrees, which I'm going to evaluate on the calculator. Very important, remember, never cancel uh, sine. Those are mathematical operations and you cannot cancel them. You must treat uh, sine of 21 and sine of 97 as numbers. Okay, and so now we're going to do that on the calculator. So all I need to do is um, do uh, 16 multiplied um, by, uh, open the trig function, sine of 21 degrees, um, go outside the parentheses, divide, and now I'm going to divide by sine of 97, and my answer, 5.78 correct to two decimal places, so that's going to be approximately 5.78, oh, sorry, 78, uh, and notice also one thing to check is your calculator must be in degree mode. Okay, so what I want you to do is pause the video at this point, go ahead and try to get the setup of example B yourself, and then come back and uh, see how you did. Okay, and so now what we're going to attempt to do is deal with the more complicated part of the law of uh, signs, which is the ambiguous case of the law of signs. Okay, the first two examples we dealt with were instances in which we were given AAS or ASA, uh, and in those cases there's no problem. There is potentially a problem when we deal with the law of signs if the information that we're given is in the form SSA, two sides and a non-included angle. In this particular circumstance, there are three different possibilities that could occur. Under these circumstances, SSA, it's possible that we get a single triangle and we use the law of signs in the normal way to calculate a missing side or angle. It's also possible, though, that with the same information, we are able to produce two triangles. And a third possibility is that there is no triangle possible at all. And so the first thing is we need to determine whether ambiguity is even a possibility. And so there are three requirements to determine whether or not ambiguity is even possible. The first is that the information given must be in the form of SSA, two sides and a non-included angle. The second requirement is that the angle given is acute, and the third scenario, oh sorry, the third requirement is that the side opposite the given angle is smaller than the other given side. If all three of these uh, requirements are in place, then there are three different possibilities. There is a possibility of no triangle existing, one triangle existing, or two triangles existing. What I'm going to demonstrate in the next three scenarios is how you know which one has occurred. Okay, so I'm going to move down to the first scenario. In this particular case, uh, we've got SSA, so you're given that DE is 13, you're given that angle D is 30, and in this particular case, we're going to use X as 5, or rather we're using the length of side EF as 5. And so I've drawn a diagram because I know what the outcome is going to be to show you why it ends up being like this. But if you were given this information without a diagram, what you would do is go ahead and set it up just like a normal law of signs question. We don't have a 90 degree angle, so we're not using Sokotoa, but we are going to use the law of signs. And so I'm going to start by saying uh, sine of 30 degrees over 5 is going to be equal to sine of angle F, oops, sorry, angle F, divided by uh, the side opposite angle F, which is 13. So if that closes out, then angle F is going to be sitting over here, and the angle, uh, the side opposite is going to be 13. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for F. So I'm going to start by multiplying by the 13, and so I have sine of angle F is going to be 13 multiplied by sine 30 over 5. And then my final step in terms of calculations is to say angle F is going to be sine to the minus 1 inverse function to find an angle of 13 sine 
30 over 5. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter that into the calculator. Okay, so let me uh, pull up my calculator. Here we go. And what I'm going to be entering is pretty much the same calculation as before. So I need sine to the minus 1. Uh, I'm going to use my fraction button over here. Uh, 13 multiplied by sine of 30 degrees and then I'm going to divide by 5 and when I enter what you'll see is your calculator yields an answer undefined and what we need to realize now is when we come back what we need to realize is this is the situation that we're in that angle F ends up being undefined and because angle F ends up being undefined this tells us that we're dealing with the instance where no triangle is possible. And the reason that no triangle is possible is because the length of the side, no matter where you put it, is too short to close out the triangle. And this can only occur if it's SSA, if the angle given is acute, and if the side opposite the uh, angle is smaller than the other side. Okay. So this is the first scenario uh, that uh, could occur uh, under the ambiguous case of the law of sines, which of course uh, requires three things before we have to consider whether it's ambiguous. So let me show you the second scenario. And what you'll find is that the given information changes only slightly. Okay, so in this scenario, we've got, uh, here's angle F, uh, the side opposite is 13, here's 30 degrees, the side opposite is x and in this particular case we're going to do the calculation with 6.5 okay and I'm just going to show you obviously this diagram is already complete it shows that we're going to get a 90 degree angle but this is how we're going to set the problem up if we didn't know what the measure of angle F was we would be doing the following exactly the same as before we're going to say uh, sine of 30 degrees over um, the side opposite which is 6.5 is going to equal uh, sine of angle F and that's going to be divided by uh, the side opposite, which is going to be 13. I'll skip a couple of steps here because uh, we, this is the exact same as before. So we're going to get angle F is going to be uh, sine to the minus 1 of 13 sine 30, uh, all divided by 6.5. And what you can see is that that's exactly the same as above. The only difference being the length of the opposite side is now 6.5. Okay, and so I'm going to repeat the calculation on the calculator. Uh, and so, quick trick, if you go up and you highlight something and hit enter, it'll paste all of it down there. I can then move in uh, and go to the denominator and we'll just change that to 6.5. Nice quick way to, to uh, save yourself some work. I hit enter and there you can see that it produces a 90 degree angle. This is an instance in which, and again, from a point of view of approach your setup is exactly the same and so I've set it up in the same way uh, I have no idea what the answer is going to be although we did in this case because we were told but uh, what we are able to do is use the law of signs set it up and what it does is it produces an angle of 90 degrees if this is the case this is the instance in which the ambiguous case of the law of signs has produced one triangle okay and so just a very quick recap, if the, the angle calculation produces undefined, that indicates no triangle. If the angle calculation produces 90, that indicates there is exactly one triangle possible because the length of the side is just long enough to touch the opposite side. And of course, remember, uh, the distance between a point and a line is always the shortest distance measured at 90 degrees. And so it's just long enough, which confirms that we've got a 90 degree angle. And then what we're going to do, because we're shortly going to run out of time on this video, is I'm going to show you the third scenario uh, uh, in, this, in the first part of the next video. So hopefully we're clear here. Uh, an undefined angle uh, means that our conclusion is no triangles. Uh, an angle of 90 degrees means our conclusion is one triangle and then of course our next scenario is going to be the two triangle scenario and I'll show you the setup uh, and the reason uh, in part two.